Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Deborah Hatswell and you're listening to BBR Investigations. And tonight I have a treat for you. Lee Solway has joined me from the Supernatural Podcast and he's going to share his experience with a sheep squatch in Hampshire and some of his experiences with the Fae when he was much younger. I know that you'll enjoy it. And if you're interested in those kind of subjects, pop across and see his podcast. The link is in the description below. Do you know what, right? Because people call it goat man. People call it deer man. Yeah. Around our area, we've had, I've had maybe five or six different people tell me about a deer man. Um, and then I've also heard it called sheep man. Yeah. And now I've seen it, it's all three of them. It, right. it's, it's the eye of the beholder type thing. It's um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll you know I'll just briefly tell you what happened. I mean, it was only a brief encounter anyway because it was um, your typical uh, British rural road, mm. woods on both sides, and it's one of those roads where the the road meets the forest. It, it yeah. literally you might have four inches of, of uh, after the white line, you might have four inches of um, tarmac before you're in the forest, and it did it dropped off. The road on both sides dropped off, and it's probably only maybe the road was let's say a foot higher than the, the forest floor. Mm-hmm. And obviously the, the forest is up and down or over the place. And just ahead of me, it, again, it, this was uh, before Christmas, but the, the leaves were all on colours, you know, browns, all that. And it was it was actually a sunny day. Mm. And I'm driving along. I know you've got the canopy of the woods and that above you sort of thing, because as you drive down the road, that's where the trees do meet, but there was a lot of light coming through. And I'm just driving along and, in my uh, peripheral vision, as I'm looking straight, at the corner of my eye, I saw a white flash, right? Yeah. And I immediately thought, being a you know driver and driving a lot, you you often get like uh, polythene bags, that sort of thing, blow out in front of you, that sort of shit. So I've seen it at the corner of my eye and recognised it straight away as a bag. That's what I thought. Yeah. And so obviously clocking it i'm like i need to know a bit more about this where it's going so I, then my I focus is on it and it may be i don't know maybe at this point it was maybe 100 yards up the road from me something like that and when i looked to where i thought this was i could didn't initially see it right. and i thought well, that's strange mm-hmm. and then my eyes lowered and as i was driving towards it my eyes lowered and i see this thing just sat there and it was it was it was hunched up and i'm going to say killed up i'm going to say hunched up do you know where um, do you know where the arms come in? Yeah, you've seen an animal where it where it does that, and it's sort of cowering down, and its head's yeah. turned to the side, like a like, not a dog, because obviously the dog's feet are beyond the ground. Um, its front feet, if that's what you call them, there's actually more like hands. They were actually up, tucked under it, and it was sort of cowering down. Have yeah. you ever seen um, Pan? You know, from mythology. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what depiction, I thought, yeah. That depiction of him doing that, that's exactly what this was doing, but it was much bigger than that, what you'd expect to see, because this thing was squatted down and it was cowering like this. And it's the thighs on this thing must have been, I would say, at the top of the thigh, you're talking at least a foot across, maybe a bit more. Um, they, were, they were huge. The only animal you could sort of, I mean, mountain goat comes to mind, yeah. obviously, a mountain goat, or maybe a, a kangaroo. Um, with a whip for the, the, the rear legs compared to the, the yeah. front, if you know what I mean. Uh, but again, the, 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 the hands were, were killed in, but I would say there was there was hands more than feet because they were small, um, not like a T Rex, but they were they were small, clearly yeah. smaller than the legs. I mean, as I and I, I see the body briefly, but then I locked eyes with it, and as soon as I locked eyes with it, I couldn't take my eyes away from it because yeah. the eyes were um, very much goat like and i can see where that you know that goat man thing comes in they were very much goat like there was on the side of its head and they were red you know like an albino um yeah rabbit yeah they weren't glowing it was just red um and again this is daylight and it had a, a mop of hair over the front of its face it had a long snout and i would mm. say it was more like um similar to a goat but it was more broad than a goat more yeah. Had more about it, more more like a horse, if you like. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. Um, maybe not as wide at the front. It did taper, but not not drastically. And the front of its muzzle, if that's what you call it, there was um, it was white, right? So 
predominantly the thing was white. Okay, it had spots of it were grey fur. Like um, I don't know if you've ever seen a grey pony. A, 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 yeah, okay, a, yeah. A, like a fluffy pony. It was that um, mm. that colour. But the predominantly it was grey. It was sorry white, and then it had these grey patches. But its face was white. But at the front here, it had um, on its top lip and bottom of its chin, it was black, like black, black fur. And I don't know if that's because it's been rooting around in the ground, Possibly. or if it was if it was naturally that colour. But I've <laughs> since seen pictures of like a some sort of reindeer. And because I was trying to think of things, what it could be, yeah, what could and it I be? looked at a picture of this reindeer, which was actually grey, but it had a similar marking on the front of its thing. So I don't know if there's a reason they have their markings. Probably for pr yeah. uh, predator protection or something. I don't know. Yeah, um, I get you. you know, break, like a camouflage thing. I, I don't yeah. know why. I didn't look into it, but I see there's a picture of a reindeer with this thing. So this had it. Um, yeah. So its its body was covered in this. Uh, I'm going to say fair because it probably was, but it was, I would say, at least four inches long. Right. It was long fair, and it was really heavy, heavily fair. Again, like, you know, like I say about people calling it a sheep man? Yeah. It's very similar to when a, a sheep's got its full wool on. Um, not, not so much matted. I didn't see many mats on it. From what I recall, I, can't, I mean, it's possible, but I didn't see it. looked quite well kept, to be fair. Yeah. The only thing I get from, I mean, obviously the the fur, like I say, was was um, real thick and say like a, like a sheep. That mm -hmm. that's the best way to describe it. So it's kind of all three in one. It didn't yeah. have horns, okay. It did have ear rolls that sort of jutted out. Remember, it had like a big mop of hair on its head, but it did have yeah. ear rolls that stitched out. Not massive things like you'd expect, yeah. just enough. Um, and it was cowering, and and I got and I, and I don't know if I'm making this up or if this is what. It, it was trying to convey to me, but I got the impression that it was ill or injured. Yeah. But again, that could just be, a, it just could be nonsense, but that's the impression I got. The way it was carrying, the way it was looking at me, never took its eyes from me. I don't think it expected me to see it. Uh -huh. well, I'm, I'm positive it did expect me to see it. I think the movement of it, what I saw, what I initially thought was that carrier bag or that polythene bag that was going to blow across. I think that was it squatting down. Yeah. Yeah, you've spotted it, that. Yeah, yeah, and it had done that way in the distance when it squatted down. And I think um I think just being a professional driver and that peripheral vision that you yeah. you know, you just use I think that that was in his I think in a normal day, maybe you'd probably just drive past that. I wouldn't have even noticed it. You certainly wouldn't if you didn't notice it squatting down, you wouldn't have noticed it sat in the ground. Mm. Uh, even though it was very distinctive because it was white against this orange and brown background. But yeah, I mean that was it. It was a it was a brief thing. Um, again, you know, the, the when I speak to people around my neck of the woods that have seen this thing, they always say it's a deer, man, and it's always brown. Um, and well, yeah. interestingly, it's never, it's never the no, and no one's ever said to me, and I've never asked the questions. I don't like to lead the witness anyway, but yeah. um, I've, I've never had anybody say to me that it had a, it had a shaggy coat. Right, so it's always just been sleek. It's always been sleek, just like a deer. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's interesting itself. I, I, you know, I've, you know, I've had this, and this was again, this was in uh, Hampshire, so wherever that is, it's about 150 miles from where I live. So, right. you know, so it's not, it's no way in the area that you know I normally be. It's just, just a millions of one chance sort of thing. Again, the weird thing is, and this is the weird thing. I mean, it's all weird, but this is the really weird thing is that I have got a camera in the in the van. Yeah. I've got a phone, which was right next to me. And at no point did I think, stop. At the end of the road, I thought, stop and go back. But then I convinced myself it would be gone. Yeah. And I carried on with what I should be doing, what I was there to do. Never went back. And my brain, for that first initial 30, 40 seconds after I saw it, was trying, it was, it was like a movie, just going through all these different things that it was. Like, um, yeah. it showed me a date, showed me a pony. Yeah. I remember seeing pony. I remember seeing all these things, and it was, it was, it was trying to convince me. And I presume this is just a natural human reaction. I don't think it's it was the same much. for me. Yeah, yeah it, it was this, it was that, it, and, and I was saying, no, it won't, no. no. And, and then the looks of the image came. And by the time this had all happened, I know it sounds surreal, but by the time this had all happened, I was a ways down the road and. Then I convinced myself it'd be gone if I turned around, and it probably wouldn't. I don't know, but I never went back, and that's ridiculous. 
no, I don't think it is ridiculous. You don't get time to think. I know that's one of my things. Being a fellow witness, people say, you know, why didn't you this? Why didn't you that? I didn't think. I pushed my friend to the floor and I ran. I thought he was going to get me. Mm. And now I think, oh, Debbie, you should have run back. But there was, I didn't, there wasn't a conscious thought. I just, it was terrifying. And I get what you mean about the movement. If that thing that I saw had just stayed completely still, I wouldn't have known it was there. It just walked straight past it, yeah. It just, I, would, I just wouldn't have known. It was just the movement of it mm. within the shadow. You get, this, you get that same, you get that from a lot of witnesses where they say, when they initially saw it, it looked like a tree stump or it looked like yeah. a this or is that, until it moved. And obviously our eyes are designed to, to look at movement, you know, yeah, side so. movement in a sort of vertical world. So we do need that movement. It's like, it's, that's how camouflage works on most animals. When yeah. it stay still, you know, like you see fish that lay on the, the seabed, you know, whatever, the chameleon even. But if they don't move, you don't yeah. see them. That's yeah. it. That's exactly your eye tunes into it, isn't it? I've yeah. had a few reports, Lee, from the UK where not the same creature at all, but a kind of similar circumstances in the fact that each of the witnesses described it as being sickly or ill in some way. Mm. And they, they felt that like it made itself known to them because it felt sickly or ill in some way. And each and every one of them said, I didn't, I didn't, just didn't know what to do. I just went home. You know, so what you. How would you know? I mean, I mean, that's interesting that other people have reported that as well. So that makes me, that makes me want to wish I had, you know, I wish I'd done more because that was the one thing that bothered me after it. it was like, not that I'd seen, I mean, that was no. you know, a one in a million chance, but it was that feeling. And I was trying to, I, I don't know where that came from. They could tune into him. I, I, I do believe that is entirely possible. And I wonder if it's a genetic thing because with the, you know, like you say, the fae, the grey folk, folk, grey folks, what I call them, and the fairy folk, if you want to go that far. But they, I wonder if that is something to do with genetics because it, it tends to be people with an Irish heritage, a Scottish heritage, those sorts of things, a Gaelic heritage, if you like. They they tend to be the people who see these things. Now, whether that's just because of location. Obviously, that could be a thing. But when I saw what I saw, I was in England. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, how many times do you get people who are um, clairvoyant and then the mother was clairvoyant or, yeah. you know, sort of, and, yeah, you could easily say, well, it's just a learned experience, that sort of thing. But when you're seeing things, I think that's different. Yeah. You know, yeah. my kids my kids have seen things and I never, I never, I never say to them, no, you didn't see it. You know what I mean. I say, yeah. tell me what you saw. Yeah, explain so what you saw, and then and then I try and explain as best as I can because no one an expert on any of this. But I try and explain as best as I can what I think they saw, what it possibly wants, that kind of thing. But they seem to just accept it. You know, there, there was one just quickly. I know we've got other things to talk about, but there was one occasion there where they they asked me why I came in the bedroom that yeah. night. And um, you know you've heard this again, you know, but and I and I said I didn't pop in. They said you were stood in the doorway. You know he was watching you. You know, and it was obviously some sort of shadow person. But and then I explained to him what they were and that they observe as well as sleeping for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, but you know they are part of this world, and I don't think there's much we can do about it. You know what I mean? Um, I did that but, when I was a kid. I needed that. What you did for your kids there is worth more than gold. If somebody had said to me, Debbie, it, it's okay, it's just part of the world, people see them, I think I would have had a very different upbringing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I was convinced that I was crackers because people, my parents said I was crackers. You know, so you think, oh my God, it just must be me. So you, go, I went kind of quiet and into my shell. If I'd have had a dad like you who went, no, it's, it, people do. I don't know why it happens, but it happens. I think that would be massive for me. I think yeah. it. I think the taboo on a lot of this stuff has been broken. I mean, obviously, we look at Bigfoot, those sorts of things, and that taboo has been massively broken. I, you could say yeah. finding Bigfoot, those sorts of things help like that. But um, there is a lot more people willing to talk about these things. Uh, interestingly enough, I mean, the um, black cat, you know, the black cat that we get in the UK, which yeah. shouldn't exist. We know that it's a, you know, melanistic cats don't naturally exist in the wild that they're very rare and every cat we see in the uk 
his black cat. Um, whether it's some sort of domestic creature that we haven't caught up with yet. But those sorts of things where people are more willing to come forward with that even, um, even that the taboo for that sort of thing has been broken. And, you know, I, you know, not, I can't give you a figure, but there's lots of people who've seen these things yeah. who have been sort of hiding in the shadows and that. But when you mention it, they say, oh, you know, I've seen that or so-and-so seen that. And there are more out there than what we even give credit for for them before you go into the, you know, the supernatural and the, you know, the more stranger creatures that we probably will touch on. I, I mean, I've got to agree. I take the majority of cat reports that I take are black. Mm. And if you look at the newspapers at the moment, every week there's a new cat story. In. Don't naturally occur in the wild. Not what no. they do, but very, very rare, you know. So mm. what are we looking at here? Is this a supernatural being? Or is this a cat that we haven't caught with? Is it a native species that we just don't, that we haven't yeah. caught with? You know, there, there could be, you know, many different, and we have lynx and things like that, don't we? We have, yeah. we do have, you know, biggish four-legged creatures. So maybe this is some sort of hybrid, but whatever it is, it's there and it's quite numerous. We stopped talking about large cats here, but we carried on the conversation about driving on the road and the things that people see. Lee actually um, discovered two deer legs left in the middle of the road, and I asked him about that road, and he went on to explain that he had taken a number of reports from local people who'd also experienced strange things. You know, I've had a few people that I've seen crossings there. I've even had one guy who I know, you know, quite well. I know this guy's salt of the earth, but he's actually seen a wolf there. Well, a wolf, I mean, come on. But... um. And it, there was three other witnesses. So, right. and as it were, they were um, working on some trees in the area. They were actually stationed as this wolf walked under them. They was actually up the tree. Yeah. So they were looking down, and this thing walked between them. And I watched it go across the field and lay down on the other side of the field. And they could see it from where they were, and it, and it was grey. It was a wolf. I mean, we don't have wolves in England. Well, we did, <laughs> but we don't now. But this is just up the road from where I am, and it's very close. Great limber, uh, very close to that A18. So it was at this point that Lee asked me if I wanted to know about his experiences with the fairy folk, and I did because I think it might tie in to the creature that he saw, the sheep squatch, the pan like creature. I think there may be a connection there. First, the first one I saw, so I've seen two, and I can't remember which way round. Yeah they occurred but i think the first one was possibly just a really brief encounter it was um something running across the living room floor we did have cats at the time we were small children at the time and uh, mm. we did have cats something running across the living room floor we went to investigate and there was uh my mum had um brasses like um yeah. you know like the the old horse um yeah. What do you call them? I can't remember what you call yeah, them. Yeah, the horse brasses. That's exactly yeah. what they're um, That's exactly what they're called, isn't it? Yeah, she had those sorts of things hanging up and she maybe had some other little ornaments around the fireplace that were brass, that kind of stuff. And uh, for whatever reason, people did that in them days, didn't they? And um, this creature had run across the fireplace and was, was picking up one of these uh, objects and looking at it. Right. Um, I don't know why. And anyway, we run in and it, 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 to, to all intents and purposes, it looked like, um, if I said goblin, yeah. that would be... I think most people would be able to picture what this is, like a bald goblin, um, grey skin. Um, you know, again, we're talking about being the grey folk and things like this. And uh, again, incidentally, we nowadays we call them maybe aliens or something. I don't know. Maybe that, that ties in. But uh, but this was only short. I mean, this was probably uh, maybe not even 30 centimetres high. It's very small. And it was just looking at this brass object. And we came in the room behind it. And then when it, clocked us that we were there it took off it looked at us and it just took off across the side of the room it hid behind a, a chair in the corner right. and we climbed up over the chair to look over the top and it sort of looked up at us and then just blinked out um they never seen it again there not that one anyway i saw something which i think was probably a fairy as well but um that was that was a one-time shop right. sort of thing Again, that was, I don't know if that was the first one I saw, or the second one. Or, yeah, which way around? They were probably very similar in time frame, though. Maybe even within a year apart, something like that. But right. the, 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 um, the other one that I saw, because I remember being 
probably about 13 year old and I must have been the same age in this and mm. it was summer holidays and uh, you know the brief version of this is I, I came downstairs I remember all my focus was on about getting out with my mates we planned yeah. to do a, a water fight um yeah. all that sort of stuff we had the, you yeah. know, the water balloons ready and all that and that was all I wanted to do so I come downstairs had my cereal and I was about to run outside and meet my mates on the corner so that was the plan anyway as I'm running past the um the door which we call the cubby hole but it's basically the door under the stairs and this was yeah. a full length door it was on the back of the stairs and it was rattling now it's an internal door there's no reason for this to be rattling other than maybe there's an animal in there and I think like say we had cats at the time so possibly I was thinking the cat got in there somehow so I opened the door and in the door and I, I'm not, not going to say to my amazement because I, yeah, I wasn't amazed which yeah. is really weird right but there was a kid in there about my age and he was dressed in a, a hood and a cloak um if you've ever seen Fantasia the Mickey Mouse thing that's the sort of thing that came to mind when I saw him but it was it, I can't remember which way around it was it was either purple with yellow like mm. stars or moons or whatever or, the other, or the other way around but it was those colours. And again, he, you know, he's just wearing his cloak and he's in there. And I remember we had a little brief conversation. He asked me what I was up to that day. And again, none of this is strange. Is, that is really weird. But none of this is, you know, seems strange at all. So we're talking. He's asked me what about I was doing. I told him. I said, I've got to go. Told him I'll meet him. And that was it. Shut the door and off I went. And this happened for maybe the next two or three days. And we had, say, say quite cordial conversations. No issue. And then maybe the fourth day, uh, that's when things changed. And I opened the door. The door was rattling. I opened the door. He's there. We have a brief conversation. And then at this point, he hands me a test tube. Uh, the easiest way to describe this thing is a test tube. Um, but it basically was a, it was a glass vial with a clear liquid in it. Uh, no, no stopper or anything. It was yeah. just open. And he, and he said, oh, I've got you a drink. Or I've got you a present or whatever he said. And I said, no, you're all right, you know what I mean? And then we was talking, and he and he offered me it again. I said, no, you're honestly, you're all right, you know, I, I don't need it, you know, I'm not interested. And so we talked a bit more, and he offered me it again. And no, each but... time he offered me, he got more and more forceful with it. Um, and I said, look, I don't need it, you know, I'm not interested, I don't, I don't want you to drink, you know what I mean? So he got, like I say, really angry at this point, and he sort of leaned in at me and you know, you will drink it, you need to drink it and all this. And if you don't drink it, you know, bad things will happen to you, all that stuff. And I'm like, I'm getting a bit worried. Now. I'm like, no, no, no. And yeah. I think in my head, the the illusion, the spell that he was putting yeah. on me, if that's what you want to call it, started to slip then. And his disguise started to slip at the same time. And that's when I recognised him as a, like I say, goblin or a gremlin. If you remember the movie Gremlins, this is kind of what I'm looking at. Didn't have the ears, you know, had the human ears, but essentially that's what I'm looking at here. Yeah. And again, it's grey, not green. And it, it's teeth and everything. And it's, uh, it, again, it didn't have spiky teeth, it had human teeth. It's essentially, it's, it's basically a real miniature human being. That's kind of yeah. what it looked like, but, but grey skin. Um, no hair. It, it might have had the odd little hair you know like you see on like a pork scratching of a pig you know yeah it kind of yeah that sort of that skin would be sort of what it had but um anyway his, his disguise started to slip and he got really violent and and at that point i shut the door and i remember the door violently shaking for what felt like forever but it's probably only 30 40 seconds um and then it stopped and i went on about my day and mm. it might have been years later maybe I was watching a TV programme or reading a book or I can't remember how it came about now, but years later, I remembered the experience. Yeah. But I didn't remember it at the time. That's happened to me before with the UFO, so I don't know I don't know if that's the brain doing that. Yeah, in a nutshell, that's kind of what happened. And again, that and the that happened at the same house, um, but that's it. You know, nothing else has ever happened there. No one else has ever seen anything like that there. Um other than, like, say, the first one where there was two people witnessed that, but other than that, no one else has ever reported anything like that, and I've never seen anything like that again. Um, Strength of will got you out of that. If you just drank that drink, you'd never eat or drink in the fairy realm. Ever. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because this is like that. Maybe we was doing like research years later or something like that, and um, or maybe I saw a story and I think it was about that where they said, you know, 
these thing these creatures in the legend they they take they make um a noise in the forest you go and observe sometimes it's a crying baby sometimes it's music yeah. and you'll follow them into the forest and you'll see this beautiful banquet laid out in front of you and they'll say come and join us and you see this banquet and you take of it and as soon as you eat it turns back to um you know mud and bugs and back and that's what they've made this banquet out but to your mind it looks like a beautiful feast and yeah. they actually call that back in the day they actually called the magic that they use glamour and that's kind of where we get the word glamorous you know yeah i was going to say the same thing to you the glamorize so yeah that's what they do yeah and it'll um, appear in its softest way that it can to entice you yeah and people will take them and obviously as we know the, the story goes that if you eat from the fairy kingdom or drink from the fairy cup you become a fairy and i'm not quite sure how you um get back but i know people sometimes reappear don't they so but yeah no i didn't take it so. will. honestly the only way i know that people can overcome it is literal strength of will and and you've had you've had the fortitude to do that you said no several times mm, they yeah. Can't put, yeah they can't put anything on you that you don't invite so no this did feel like i i had certain free will Mm -hmm. definitely um you know he what never... worries me about that though lee is the fact that you weren't surprised by seeing him no that's the weirdest thing isn't it that, that mm. this and again you know i should point out for for people who obviously nobody knows but the actual cubby all i'm talking about now although you could stand in it as a you know it's under the stairs is a full length yeah. door so you can stand in there the difficulty being though that the actual ground level was uh there was so many bits of debris in there like um my dad's fishing tackle box yeah. there was the hoover in there there was all sorts of things that you couldn't physically stand in there you know mm. so what i was seeing was a boy but it was from the waist up if you like yeah. which again never never registered until years later when i re reimagined it and i thought well you know that just couldn't have happened you know couldn't have been stood there sort of thing and that's when it sort of fell into place that the whole mm. thing was a was a was some sort of a spell i would say i don't know I, yeah. I didn't know what you want to call it but there was something happening there that he had a lot more control over this reality than what i've got let's put it like that yeah but I've, 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 you know i've spoke to people who actually saw two of these basically um how can i describe it they they said you know like he might roll a picnic blanket up yeah right so they saw two of these and they basically rolled a picnic blanket, they had a rolled picnic blanket and they sort of unrolled it and it became like a doorway and they went through it and then just dropped it and it, they're gone, you know? And that's when some people seen them and they were gone. You know, there was another guy that saw, he went, I think it was a graveyard he was in, incidentally. I know that's quite popular for these sorts of weird things, but um, he saw two of these wrestling over a, a piece of litter as far wow. as I remember, it might have been a coke can or something like that. And there was two of them, little these little goblin type creatures wrestling over this coke can. And there was a third one, sort of leant back against the wall, sort of arms folded, watching these two carry on. And it was that one that clocked him, looking at him. And as soon as he clocked him, he sort of made a noise to the other two, and then they all blinked out together. Boom, boom, boom. Oh. The can just fell. It's so. just happening for my grandson. He's ten at the minute. And we were talking the other day because he'd, um, he said, do you remember that gnome I saw now when I was little? I said, I do, so he wouldn't talk about it at the time. So I said to him, at, back then, he was so frightened of it, I had to go in and clear his room out and everything. And he just said, he, he'd, he'd, fight, he'd first, when you first put them on the internet and they have that like blue tablet and they go on all the baby games and stuff, it had mm -hmm. a camera on it. And he was just randomly clicking and through the camera he saw at the end of his bed, calls him the button-eyed gnome. He said he was this little horrible man, but he had buttons for eyes. And he said, but he wasn't on the other photographs now. And I just said to him, next time, if you see him, he say, out, out of my room now. And you know, you've not got permission. So in the end, I had to make him like a Bessemer, I had to make him like something to, to symbolize the fact that it was his room and he was in charge of his room to kind of yeah. shut yeah, and I know for a fact when he's 13 or 14, it'll ramp up again because it can, tends to do for boys. So I'm thinking maybe you've had some experiences in your very early days that are locked off somehow or are being kept from you somehow. It's quite you possible, know? yeah. It's, mm. I mean, it's strange when... I mean, I don't know if you want me to go into the UFO, but it, it's a similar thing with that, you know. It, it's strange when you get a memory back yeah. That's obviously been there the whole time and you can't remember it at all. It's a really weird feeling. But that the same 
and again, there could be things in there. I actually yeah. tried um, regression. Yeah, I have. After, okay. after the UFO thing, I tried regression with a gym and a hypnotist and that, and um, I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. You're too um, strong-willed. You're far too yeah. strong-willed. Yeah, you're not. It just didn't to. work, and it's a real shame, you know, because I would have liked to to have done it. I might try it again, you know, but um, but yeah, I just couldn't do it, and I was really trying my hardest to because I wanted to know, but I just couldn't. <laughs> Do it, but anyway, the um, but that came after the after um, seeing this thing again. So, when I mean, the story for this is essentially there was three of us, uh, me and a couple of mates, and um, we'd gone down to uh, the park, what we call park, but it used to be a graveyard, um, Ainsley Street Park in Grimsby. It used to be a graveyard, and they it used to flood, and a lot of the Apparently, it was, it was where the, the local uh, prostitutes used to hang out and all that. So it had a bit notorious thing anyway. Yeah. But the reason they moved it is because it used to flood. That's yeah. that's the that's the re that's the reason they give. But essentially, the, you know, the, the the bodies would basically exhume yeah. themselves. So they um, moved them, and actually, incidentally, it's flooded now. There's actually it's formed a pond there. So well, you know, but it, yeah. but, it, but it is an old graveyard. You know, you can still walk around. You can still see some remnants of the graves there. But they did move all the bodies and put them in conservated yeah. ground. So it's an but it's a basically a park now. It's not massive by any means, but we were there, and the idea was there was a fence uh, between the park and an office block, and the idea being that we was going to dig a hole under this fence, so an easy escape route. Because we used to play games with these kids and that. And again, we're probably fourteen to fifteen year old at this point something like that so anyway we're digging this hole and we didn't bring anything with us shovels out like that so we're doing it by hand and it was really tough going so my brother at the time he was like um i'm not doing this you know yeah. just not, not my thing not fun anymore <laughs> no so he leant back on a tree there's like a little small tree there and he just leant back on it and he's just looking at the stars Anyway, we'd probably dig for maybe another five, ten minutes. And he said to us, hey, look at this star. It's real, really big. And we looked. And the easiest way I can describe it is if you hold a, uh, a two-penny piece at arm's length, mm -hmm. right, that's the moon. If you are hold a, a 5p at arm's yeah. length for a penny, that's about the size of this star. So it's huge you know, compared yeah. to what you expect to see. And the rest of the stars in the night, they're pinpricks. Anyway, we looked at it, and you know, you see like these odd things every now and then. You might see a planet or something like that, and it's particularly big. And which I just said, well, it's probably a planet. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, you just said, yeah, maybe. So we carried on, we carried on digging, and he carried on watching this. And maybe another ten minutes went past, and he says that star's moving. Anyway, I was like, can't be. So we stopped what we was doing. I remember we was all stood in line, we was watching this star. And if you kept your eye on it, you really definitely have to get your eye on it. But it was moving so slowly. And the only reason you could really see it was moving is because it was moving the direction where the moon was. So the gap was getting smaller. Yeah. I think if it had been a clear night with no moon, I don't know if you'd be able to register that it was actually moving. Mm. But anyway, it was moving. And I remember turning to him going, yeah, you're right, that is moving. And you know a blink of an eye it was just like a quick like that and it was a craft above us and it was two overlapping circles it was directly underneath it right it couldn't have been any more over us if it had tried and it was two overlapping circles and um it made no noise there was no lights on it or anything like that and it was just there and it was probably at this point i think a lot of trees say the trees are 40 foot this was probably maximum of 80 foot above us um and it was probably 100 feet wide now i've been under the vulcan bomber and i've been under a chinook helicopter and we're talking about that size okay right so you know that that's what we're looking at here and again it was there and we all sort of looked at each other and say what what's this you know what i mean and uh, with that there was a guy walking two or three german shepherds across the park and somebody shouted to him hey mister what's that and he looked up and as soon as he's seen it he just took off running so at that point, we was like, well, if he's running, we're running. Yeah. There was no jeopardy. You know, I always say this, but there was no jeopardy. There was no feeling of fear. There was no feeling of anything, really, other than just curiosity. Uh, but as soon as he took off running, we we just run. And this thing moved away, and eventually it went back to a star in the night sky. I remember running at home. Uh, me and my brother went one way. Our friend went and carried on straight up, and we never talked about it. Maybe... I don't know, 10, 10 years later, so maybe I'm 25, something like that. I'm watching a programme just 
by chance I'm watching um, a program on the paranormal that particular night, and again, it wasn't something I was into at all. Yeah, uh, it was just it was just just the thing I was on, and and he showed this. Um, I still remember it was Rich Planet TV is what the program was, and he had this old lady on there. I think it was in Wales, and she drove up to a set of traffic lights. So I'm watching it, and she drives up to a set of traffic lights, and she's describing seeing this star in the sky. And um, before she, the traffic lights had changed, this star had changed into a dumbbell-shaped craft, is what she described. Right. And then she was walking, and she was looking around, and saying, anybody else seeing this? And I can't remember if it blinked out, or I can't remember how it, how it finished, but when that came on the telly, that memory came, what I've just told you, yeah. that came back. So that was... I did not remember that at all. If someone had said to me the day before, have you ever seen a UFO? I'd have said no. It's quite uh, common. It's quite uh, common. And so listen, it came back. So obviously I I rewound the program. I asked uh, my brother to come over. Didn't tell him why. Put the program on. Let him watch it. And as soon as he finished watching it, he turned to me and said, that's what we saw. So he remembered. And then he started filling in certain details that I'd forgot. Like underneath, for instance, you know, the old, do you remember the old film reels that you used to see with the, yeah. the, the whole, oh, that's kind of what the bottom of this looked like. Right. And it was embossed. I don't know, I can't tell, you, but there was definitely four or five holes in this on both sides of this. Because it was it's basically two overlapping circles, like a figure yeah. eight, that's what the shape was. And again, this old lady said what she saw looked like a dumbbell. Now, from the side, that's probably what this looked like, but yeah. we directly but the weirdest thing about it obviously is um the the memory being um you know blanked almost yeah, that's weird. Yeah. but the fact we was looking at it when it showed itself to me and I, you know i could be totally backing up the wrong tree and i'm willing to accept that but for me i would say that thing had consciousness yeah whether it was the craft what as i'm calling oh, it, craft, it? yeah or, or whatever was you know, on board. I don't know if there's anything on board. It could have been some sort of like probe like um vessel, I don't know, but or it could have been alive itself, you know, it could have been Yeah. I don't know, but whatever it was seemed to read our thoughts, which to me well beyond human at this point. I'm not yeah. saying we can't do that. I mean it's quite possible that we've got this technology, but at at that point yeah. you know, what we saw working now like twenty years ago, whatever it was, um maybe not that much but you know 20 odd year ago but, but 15 year ago but no. it, it's you know how would i don't know to me that's the weirdest thing the fact that do you think it just showed itself to us or do you think it was just going to pop there anyway and we just happened to be there after looking at it that it sounds like a coincidence then i think it showed itself to us and i think it read what we was thinking and yeah, that's it definitely had curiosity in you because it came down close enough to really study it and there must have been something frightening about it, Lee, for the man to run. Grown adult, his, his leg get anti. So maybe it's appeared to you in a softer way than it's appeared to him. Clearly terrified him, hasn't it? I think, yeah. I think the fact that it was so close to us, that bloke was walking across the field, minding his own business, yeah. and it was that close to us. I just think when he looked up and see that there, he just... Shock. He, yeah. Because he just literally turned, and he, you know, he couldn't run any faster. The, the, the dogs didn't react at all. Um, but again, there was no noise. The only thing it had to it was like a shimmer to it, which is similar to it might have had a static to it. You know, like you were crackling like a yeah. static. It could have had that. That could have been, you know, from a dampness in the air. Sometimes you get that. But I would say it had a shimmer to it, which is not unlike, you know, when you drop a oil on water. Yeah, get you that rainbow. Different colors. That's kind of what yeah. the shimmer was, but it had, but that wasn't lights. You know, there was no lights on. No, it, so. some people believe that they they're not like they're not cloaked in a way as we see cloak as magical. It's more that whatever it is is reflecting back its surroundings. Mm. So it isn't moving through their invisible air, but because it's reflecting what's around it, it looks to us, and it's the movement that most people catch. No, I don't think it was an accident, Lee. And um, because it, no. if it's that intelligent, it, and it, it, you wouldn't have seen it. I say it to people who see cryptids. I say, well, I don't understand why. Why didn't it just not wait 10 yeah. seconds? And then you then wouldn't have seen the it. Yeah, and you wouldn't have come yeah. in. 
It just, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I've thought about that because, you know, I wonder if, I wonder if they see the vehicle as, um, they don't understand necessarily the vehicle is like, um, yeah, they see the vehicle as a creature of itself, you know, and I wonder if they wonder if it's just got that close to them that they think, well, I can see it, it's probably seeing me, so crack on, I, jump, and that yeah. sort of thing. Or whether they deliberately do it because they yeah. want to be seen every now and again. Maybe it's a game to them. I know, like, the dogman, when see people see dogman or werewolf, whatever you want to call it, I know that tends to want to leave an impression on people for whatever yeah. reason. Um you know, it's one it kind of chase, and it's very similar to your account. He called it. He, he said it was like a hyena, but upright on mm. two legs. Had this grey, different coloured grey, sickly looking animal with patches looking out of its fur. Looked yep. at him through car windscreen. He said it had yellow eyes. Well, and then another girl was in. Um, I'm going to say south east because I can't remember the exact name of the town. She's walking across the golf course, coming home from school, daytime, about about a past four. Sees this thing that she didn't know whether it was a cat, a dog, or a wolf, but it was upright on two legs, and it looked sickly and ill, and it had yellow eyes. Mm. And she, she felt like, she said, I don't know how I knew, but I knew it was ill, and I knew it was there. And what was strange was when she was a little girl, she said, every night when I was little, my dad had to come into the room because I could see a wolf at the end of my bed. Mm. And me, me dad had come in with like a, like you know, like an imaginary leash, put the lead on the dog and walk it out, and then she could go to sleep. And she said that happened until she was in, you know, in a, in a yeah, that, that sort of that lingering, that sort of um, showing itself, you know, whether at the window or in your dreams or yeah. like you say, it actually present in the room, you know, that does come up from time to time. And again, if I've taken 10 reports of and I never lead the witness. I just let the witness say what they want yeah. to say. And if they tell me it's got fear, it's got fear. If they tell me it hasn't got fear, I've got fear. Yeah. But um, I would say out of the 10, let's say I've taken 10 reports of, of a werewolf type creature. I would say four of them, at least, the people have said it had no fear. You know, that yeah. it was just like a battleship gray, gray skin. Um, and it, it was. It might have had cl like clumps of hair, like you say, like you know, people say mangy dog, that sort of yeah. thing. But, but it's not, you know, like you see the Hollywood version of the creature, and it's like it's so like it's got a mane and it's got all that yeah. stuff. But this is not what people are seeing. This is, and again, if people are just making this up or based on what they've seen in pictures or th yeah. uh, you know m movies, then but they never report that. It, it's yeah. not that that they're seeing it and it's not a purse you know like we used to think in the old days these people couldn't explain it so they thought that people were turning into werewolves didn't that's yeah. the nothing um, and you can yeah, that, understand that and it, it that makes more sense if you think about what the what the people were reporting back then it was just a, a, a humanish body yeah. with no fear you know yeah um again that would make more sense but yeah these people very rarely report fear which is weird I did speak to her father and son and they were in Scotland and they saw something that he definitely described as having um, sheep's wool and strangely, kind of seen it jump in a boundary. Yeah. But that it definitely, it was definitely like sheep's wool to everybody. It wasn't a sheep. There was no way it was a sheep. Interesting, um, interesting just on that point where you say, you know, the way it moved or hopped over, yeah. I think, you know, when people see this and the reports I've had, it always moves off like a kangaroo, that bounding motion, yeah. which is very different from the dog man or the, or the wild man. Yeah. They tend to move with a gliding motion, yeah. you know, no undulation, undulation, but these things tend to really have a bound to them. And yeah. I think that if you saw it from a distance, that'd be the only way to tell the difference at, at that point. Is I, just, I, I, oh, this, the, the descriptions are so different, aren't they? That come yeah. in. I'm like you now. I just I normally ask the witness, "What do you think it was that you saw? What name did mm -hmm. you give to it?" She's like, "Well, I'd probably ask you that. What name did you give to the creature that you saw that day? What is he in?" Again, like I said, it's got it's got elements of all three. That it's got. Yeah. It could say sheep man. You could easily say deer man, although it only the face was really deerish. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but I could understand how people might say that. To be honest, sheep. Sheep man would be the closest, the, the, the fear on it, and all But again, if you, you ask me about mythology, things like that, then pan, pan, yeah. um, 
I think they got in fourth. That was fourth, my fourth. first thought. When you got in touch with me, I thought it, it's it's probably like what I would class as pan. Like, yeah. They're honest. But without the horns. Yeah, without the horns, kind mm. of thing. I didn't but, see horns. But again, it did have, it, it really did have a really thick mop of hair yeah. on top of its head. You know, if there was anything tiny things in there, it's possible. But I didn't, I didn't see anything like that. Mm. Legs, you know, I remember the legs. I remember seeing the legs first, and then I didn't go down. I came up and then made contact with its eyes, and then I couldn't take my eyes off its eyes because it was yeah. so strange. But I'd never saw its feet. Do you know what I mean? So I never yeah. saw if it had like human feet, hooves. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I just I never saw its feet. Again, they were, would be in the ground, so it yeah. might have been difficult yeah. to see anyway. But I never saw its feet, so that so that's a bit of a shame. Um, and you know, obviously the way it was facing me, with its body was towards me, its head was towards me, so I never saw its tail. If it had a tail, I don't know what the creature was that Lee saw that night. But I'm incredibly grateful that he shared it with us. I really enjoyed chatting with Lee. It was wonderful just to chat with somebody who understood what it's like to see the impossible. And I know there are lots of you out there. And I think you'll also enjoy Lee's podcast. It's a supernatural podcast and you'll find a link to it below. So pop across and have a listen. I'm sure you'll find some topics that you're interested in. I will be back next week as always. And if you'd like some exclusive videos that you don't see on YouTube very often, pop across to my Patreon over there and you'll find new videos and articles and press releases and all kinds of things. So as I say, I'll be back with you all next week. Thank you for tuning in. Good night, everyone.